Hello everyone, happy Monday. It is the Monday after Easter and we're still in quarantine. Well, are not, not officially in stay at play in place or whatever that's called. Um, yeah, everybody's still safe and healthy here. So I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. Today, um, I'm actually doing a um, my stamping therapy on what is truly therapy for me, which not only is stamping, but is organization. So today I want to show you guys how I have some of my stamp room set up. And hopefully this gives you a little bit of um, motivation to maybe add some organization to your stamp room or your stamp area, but also give you some ideas for um, organizing your stuff or finding what works well for you. I do find that while organization is wonderful, it's got to be something that fits you. So like it might work for me and I'll tell you like why it works for me, but also why something else doesn't work for me. So we are going to go through that. I almost feel like I need to turn you guys around so stuff isn't so backwards. Um, but let me know what you think of that because it could go both ways. So I'm going to back you guys up so you can see a little bit more. So this is like my stamp table. You guys are on my stamp table. And I have over here, I hope there's not too much chaos and junk because I didn't really clean up a lot. So I have this bucket here, which holds a lot of my tools. Those are like the easy to grab um, tools that I have. So I have like, pens and pencils. I have my bone folder. I have my um, scissors. I have a fork for fork bows. Of course, doesn't everybody have a fork in their craft room? Um, in here, I have like my snail adhesive and stuff like that. And look, I even have plenty of snail adhesive because we know I always run out on daily dose of stamping therapy. But I also have like my rulers and stuff like that. Um, over it's just like my handy dandy tools for like the grab and go like small stuff um, in here I actually in this like box I actually just have mugs so these are just coffee mugs because we don't drink coffee here um, that hold you know a lot of those tools I will say don't put your markers or your stamp and blends in cups like that because all of the ink will then run down to one tip and you'll have one dried out tip and one super saturated tip. Um, so you definitely don't want to store your markers or um, anything like that in, in cups like that. So that's one handy dandy tip. The other thing is on this side of me, I have one of these fabulous rolling carts. So if your room is a little bit smaller and you just have, you know, a shelf or something like that over here, then um, then you can do all of that on the shelf. Um, if you have more room, then one of these rolling carts is absolutely fabulous. Uh, the cheapest price I have seen has always been Ikea and they do have different colors um, and they're super easy to put together. So. No worries on that. So on the top here, I actually have two little buckets. These are also from Ikea. And this one holds my vanilla scraps. And the other one holds my Whisper White scraps. I want those to be super duper handy um, because those are the things that I'm grabbing for, um, for like doing labels or uh, the greeting or something like that. So, you know, whenever I need a greeting, I just grab this piece. Can I use it for the punch that I'm using? Great. If not, let's grab a different one. Um, and it, it makes me use up my white scraps a lot better than having to actually, like, dig them out from somewhere. So, again, I have my white and my vanilla because those are my two, you know, basic colors. I also have my chamois right here. So a lot of times they're not right here. They're spread out throughout the table or who knows where. Um, so right now, like technically they all three fit between, um, between these two bins. 
So there's my chamois so that I can just grab those and, um, and clean my stamps off. Then the next shelf down, I have an entire bucket full of all my clear blocks. So I want those to be handy whenever I'm sitting here stamping so I can just grab a clear block, stamp with it, and hopefully put it back. But let's be honest, that doesn't happen. Whenever the bucket starts to get empty, then I know that I have too much of a mess out here on my table and it's time to start putting things back and, um, and putting those clear blocks back where they belong. So I have that there. I also, back in the back, I have my stamp and pierce mat so that I can stamp um, images that I'm looking to have um, you know, that nice solid look on. Uh, then I use my stamp and pierce mat, especially like photopolymer, because the foam on this gives that cushion and that even pressure. If you want more um, details on that, I did do an entire um, YouTube video on um, the tutorial with getting a nice clean stamped image uh, with with your stamp and pierce mat. So you can check that out. It was just a few weeks ago. I can also leave a link. So if you can't find it and you're interested, then let me know. And then I have some baby wipes because messes happen. And sometimes those are there and sometimes they're someplace else. So if you're just getting on, welcome to Laura's stamping therapy today. Hi, Deb. Hi, Valerie. I don't know if there's anybody else on, but I did get a notification of those. Um, so welcome. I am um, show, showing you guys a little bit of my therapy, which is um, to... Uh, to clean and organize and keep things somewhat tidy, which it's not super tidy right now, but I'm showing you what it is. So the bottom little bucket of this, I don't know if you can see it, all the way down there, that actually holds my paper trimmers. So I actually have like a big paper trimmer that I can cut multiple sheets of paper at a time. And then of course here on my desk, which again, that usually doesn't have paper trimmers in it unless my stamp room is super clean, but um, my stamp and trimmer. There's also some um, grid paper down there so that I can use it as scrap. So those are like the dead grid papers that I don't want to use in a class anymore because they're like really dirty or ripped or who knows what. Um, so then I use them until they're like unusable anymore. So that is like what is super handy for me at like a, a simple reach because the more you have things handy and easily accessible, the more you'll use them up like scraps versus going to a full eight and a half by 11 sheet. And also it makes your stamping experience um, much easier because I mean, who wants to bake something that should take 10 minutes but they can't find all the ingredients because they're digging through their cabinets and it took two and a half hours. Like that's just exhausting and crazy. So, I have all those things super handy so that I can just grab and go and use them as needed. And again, um, they're all the things that like, you know, I'm grabbing almost for every card. Like every card that I make probably, uh, I feel like 95% or higher of my cards have either vanilla or whisper white on it. So not really probably, it does. Um, so that's why I like having these here. Of course, my chamois anytime I'm stamping, which that. Um, there's not always uh, a necessity for stamping because you might be using something um, that doesn't have a greeting on it or that has a pre-printed card like the Memories and More kit. Um, so might not always need your chamois, but you know, clear blocks, white vanilla chamois, paper cutter, and then all those tools over there that are just like the basics for everything, your adhesives, um, scissors, ruler, you know, stuff like that. So that's the basics that's within arm's reach easily in my chair. I really need a chair with wheels because I tend to lean back and I'm probably going to kill myself one of these days leaning back to get everything that's back there. So everything back here, I'm going to bring you guys forward a little bit. Everything back here is, you know, within reach. What is the chamois? So the that, or I'm pretty sure that's what you asked there, but it spelled it differently. Um, so this is the Stampin' Chamois. It is like a, a foam cleaning cloth. I don't know if you would call that a cloth. 
And, um, and it's like wet, you know, like it's not like soaking wet, like I can't wring anything out, but it's, you know, it's damp and everything. So that you then just press your stamp into it when it's dirty and it will clean your stamps. So it's kind of like the new version of the stamp and scrub, although the stamp and scrub is still available and you can still get, um, you know, the stamp and mist cleaner and everything. But, uh, for the most part, I use my chamois now for, um, for everything that I'm using with cleaning stamps. I absolutely love the fact that you can pick it up. So like you can pick it up and actually like wipe off a clear block rather than, you know, pushing it into it. Um, you could pick it up and like wipe, you know, your hands or anything like that. Um, and I find that the foam gets in the grooves of the uh, stamp a lot better than the stamp and scrub used to. So the other awesome thing is, is whenever it gets dirty, like this is technically clean, um, it'll never be solid purple anymore. Um, but you can just go rinse it out and then it's good to go again. Whereas like I hated that there was always like a time break with the stamp and scrub where you had to wait for it to dry so that it could actually work again as a wet and dry side. Um, so I love that you can just always use it. And I just store mine in a clear stamp case. So you can purchase um, stamp cases both in the regular size, in the double thick size, and in the small size. Um, you can use those for anything like you can put a set of markers in these um, or the double thick ones. So there's lots of great ways to use those. If you're wondering what those all look like, I think I have some in here. Yeah, here's the double thick. But yeah, a set of markers fits in there. I don't think I have any of the short ones. No. No. I just have some empty singles and then I have those double ones. So. Okay. So, again, if you're just jumping on, welcome to Laura's Stampin' Therapy. Today we're not stamping, instead we're doing Laura's second therapy, which is organization. So, now we're moving to everything back there, which is kind of within arm's reach, but also kind of not. Um, and that's where I lean my chair. You're welcome, Valerie. Happy I could help. So I have all of my inks on one level and all of my paper on another level. And then of course stamps. So one of the big questions that I have for you guys today is how do you organize your cardstock? Do you organize it in like rainbow colors, like all your reds leading to oranges, leading to yellows, you know, and so on and so forth? Or I know, you know, with me doing Stampin' Up! and everything, I have mine broken out into color families. So I will admit that, um, you know, people always say, oh, you know your colors so well. Hmm, there's a little trick to that. And my trick is color families. So one of the reasons why I know my colors so well is because I know it's in that color family. The other thing is, is the coordinating ink is right above and the coordinating ink has, um, has the name on it already. Hi, Kim. Welcome. So I have all my colors down there. So I know that like it's red and then cherry cobbler and I really just have to figure out the difference between the two, um, rather than trying to figure out the difference between red, cherry cobbler, and lovely lipstick, because, like, we're really starting to get close on some of those colors. Let me take you a little closer, maybe. So, there's red and cherry cobbler, and then there's lovely lipstick. The other thing that I wanted to note is you'll see that on top of each of those um, pieces, I have a cellophane bag. So the cellophane bag has all the scraps for that color. So that means when I go to reach for that color, I can grab a scrap first because it's super handy and it's right there on top. And if I need a full sheet, no big deal, I can grab the full sheet below it. Again, this is a great way for you to use those scraps um, without always using a full sheet of cardstock um, every single time. I have done scraps um, like 500 different ways in the 16 years that I've been stamping. I used to have like a small little box 
um, with all of those cellophane bags in it. And that was like next to me. And then the cardstock was like over on the other side, um, which you can always check out on, on YouTube. I have all of my um, stamp room like tours. Uh, so you can see how my stamp room has evolved over the years uh, because I did a tour pretty much every time I did something new to the stamp room. Um, so you can see that because that can also help you see what fits into your space. Like I have space for this big thing right here. Um, whereas in my other, um, in my other house, we had a smaller stamp room and so stuff was a lot tighter and different and, and things like that. Of course, it was also as I, um, grew with my stamp stuff and had more income to spend, then I slowly bought each of these pieces rather than thinking I needed to do a complete overhaul of my stamp room at one time because that's not really feasible. So instead I did small little pieces and slowly built up. Like all of these took me like I think two full years to officially um, get each of them because I just, I slowly bought them and slowly added them into, you know, into my stamp room and stuff like that. Hi Karen, welcome. Again, happy Easter to all of you guys. I know I didn't get on yesterday because it was a weekend. Um, but yeah, happy Easter to all of you guys as well. So yeah, I have the little cellophane bags on the top um, because having it right there with the full sheet just makes it so much easier um, to use that up at that time. Now, sometimes my scraps get a little like out of hand and that's where I dump them into my scrap bin, which is over there, package them up so that I can um, gift them to you guys. I know some of you guys absolutely love the scrap bags and some of you guys probably think I have plenty of scraps at home. What do I need a scrap bag for? But, you know, some people love them. Some people don't like them. So that's fine. Um, but it helps me then get rid of too much. Like, for example, I know Old Olive is a little full, but it's also got a whole bunch of big pieces. So the big pieces can be used. Like sometimes I accidentally cut for a card and realize I cut the wrong size um, or something like that. So it happens. And then next to each one, you can see I have a full um, pack of the paper so that it's, you know, a lot of times I don't have a lot there, but every once in a while I have some extras um, that don't fit and they just go in that side area so that, again, I know what I have and what I need to order so that whenever it comes to, you know, when it comes to placing an order um, or knowing like if something's on sale and I'm like, oh, I don't actually need that rather than wondering what products you actually have because, it's not nice and neatly organized. You guys, I love, 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 love organization um, because I like to know what I have. I like to keep things, you know, easily accessible and things like that. And I also love pretty colors. So that's another reason why I do the um, the colors like this is, is so that I can see all the pretty colors. Um, when it comes to stamp sets, so the stamp sets right now are alphabetized. Um, I don't know that I really like that because it makes it super handy when I do know the name of the stamp set because I'm like, oh, go to the A's. It's super easy. Um, but then I find it's not there and I'm like, okay, what's the point of this alphabetizing thing? Um, so I don't know if that's like a good thing or a bad thing, but I also don't know that I'm going to change it because it does come in handy sometimes. It just doesn't always come in handy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all of my stamps. And yes, you might be thinking 16 years of stamping and that's all you have. Um, that's because anytime something retires, I get rid of it. So I keep things at a minimum by, um, by keeping things at a minimum. You know, I, I'm not keeping things that are retired and it's not that I don't like it or, I mean, it's definitely not that Stampin' Up! forces me to do that. Um, not at all. But if I, um... If I don't have current stuff, like I don't want to show a stamp set to you guys and then say, oh, but you can't get it anymore. Like that's not very fair. Um, and it would be frustrating to you guys too. So, and of course, new stuff comes out and I want to play with the new stuff. So um, by getting rid of the old stuff, it's kind of like it had its moment and I played with it then and now it's time to move on. So there are very few items that I do keep um, after they retire, and that's because like I super, super love them and 
then I might as well. But I'll be honest, usually by the next year or even by the next six months, when I'm going through everything and cleaning it out, it's like, oh, I haven't touched that stamp set. So I might as well let it go now um, because there's just always new stuff that I want to play with. And so that's kind of how I keep things fresh. I keep things at a minimum-ish um, and and how I then play with, with certain things. Like out of all those stamp sets, um, there's probably like five or six that have never been used and it actually, actually breaks my heart to know that the stamp set was never used. And I don't know, maybe I bought it on a whim cause I thought I liked it. Um, maybe I just never had a chance to get around to using it because new stuff's always coming out. Um, or maybe I just, I don't know, just don't like it. Um, so it just kind of depends. And so sometimes I'll keep it and keep playing with it. I've actually, during this quarantine, I've kind of thought maybe I should go through, pull out the ones that I haven't used and actually use them. Like, why not? I should. Um, but I've been super busy and haven't really, like, gotten that bored yet. I don't know if I ever will. Sometimes I think I'm more busy now than I was when we were running around doing everything. Um, but <sighs> we'll get there. It's just a whole new normal, I guess. Um so yeah, I'm going to kind of, oh, I'll actually mention my um, embellishments. So I have those, and those are actually, they're just shoebox totes um, that you can buy at any, you know, big box store, Target, Walmart, any of those, and they're less than a dollar, and they are amazing. Like, you guys, I have those all over my house. I have them all over my stamp room. I think I probably have eight, maybe ten probably more. Um, but like, so my clear blocks, that's one of them. All of my ribbons, there's two and three. Um, and like, they're super easy. I stick a label on them with my label maker. Let's see. Um, I used to have a label on the clear blocks, but little miss two year old likes to peel stickers. She tries to peel the stickers down on those totes and I Mama starts to lose it a little bit, but um, here. So it says ribbon, and it says ribbon on the ends. And then this way I don't have to worry about like putting it up there at the right way. It actually doesn't say ribbon on the side um, because it this used to be on a shelf sideways, so that's why it says it there. And then I put it on both ends because I didn't wanna have to remember which way to put it back on the shelf. So I can just put it on there however I want. So actually, this one, the bottom one, they're all like lined up, all my ribbons. Um, and then this one is like extra ribbons slash like little pieces of ribbon or little whatever mistakes of ribbon um, and different things like that. So I will say... Um, a lot of like craft stores will sell like ribbon rods where you like line all your ribbons up on it. That doesn't work for me because I usually take my ribbon down and like set it on my desk and like, do I like this one? Do I like that one? Do you know that sort of thing? And a lot of times I also tie off of the spool. So I don't actually like clip like, oh, I only need eight inches, eight inches, let's take it to my desk. Um, I don't do it like that, I usually work off the spool. So having a giant rod with all of my ribbons on there doesn't work for me because I would have to constantly be taking them off the spool, which also would be more difficult because then I would have to pull all of them off the spool, put them all back on after I took that one single one. So that whole spool thing, it doesn't work for me. Is it super organized? Does it look pretty on, on that rod? A hundred percent, it totally does. Hi Janet, welcome. You guys, give me a shout out because I think there's more of you guys on here um, and I just can't see all of your names. So definitely give me a shout out so I can say hi and um, and let me know if you guys um, sort your colors by like rainbow or by Stampin' Up! Color Family. So that's one of the big questions for the today. Of course, there's always the question of what's for supper tonight. So you can let me know that too. We're having pork chops because we finally found meat besides chicken. Um, so we're having pork chops and who knows what tonight. Um, but yeah, 
So that's just normal, like Laura's Laura's daily dose of stamping therapy is what we're having for supper. Um, and today I'm actually not stamping, I'm sharing um, organizational tips and stuff. So back to the spool of ribbon, um, it's just never worked on for me to do one of those rods and and that's why. So having it in those little buckets makes it easy. I can then see all of them. Yes, does it sometimes get to be a hot mess? For sure. Um, I do have needles like floating around in the bottom of those buckets to then stick in to try to keep the spool somewhat clean. But sometimes I don't like that it pokes a hole in my ribbon and it affects the look of the ribbon. And I don't have to trim off just because I poked a hole in it. So Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. You could always take like tape or even notch the side of the cardboard um, or something like that, but I typically don't. Um, I just toss it in there. Um, then the other thing that I have is that is a little three drawer, eight and a half by 11 thing. That thing has, you know, has seen everything in my stamp room. I used to have paper in it back in the day. And then I had, um, I think I had ribbons in there for a while. And then that outgrew. And so like, you know, everything kind of evolves. Don't like think that you need all of this because it might not work for you or you might not be there and it takes some time. So definitely don't feel bad about that. Again, 16 years in the making is all of this chaos and finding out what works for me. And because I'm an organizational freak, then I've, you know, pieced it together and found that that doesn't work up. Oh, now that doesn't work. And now this doesn't work. Um, and that sort of thing. So that three drawer thing actually holds embellishments. The bottom one is um, all of like my rhinestones and jewels. I'll just pull it down. And again, some of these things aren't very organized. So this says, it says pearls and rhinestones, um, but it's technically all of my jewels. And I kind of have them in baggies because it kind of got to be a hot mess at one point. So this is like the um, in colors. This one is um, all the peacock rhinestones. Um, this one is gold and silver pearls. This one is glitter enamel dots. And again, there's a lot that fell out of their bags or or like I have the bag originally and then like as I'm working, I just shove it back in the drawer and don't actually put it back away where it goes. So that happens too. And then that's when I go through and I clean things up. Not today though. This one is, oh, like this one's random things. Like why are there peacock rhinestones up here and holiday rhinestones? Although that kind of saves me sometimes whenever I'm like, gosh, I thought I had plenty, but I apparently I ran out and then boom, I find some and it's just magical. Um, here are some foil elements from the holiday catalog, but they're still available. Some pearl doilies, some of the heart doilies. And then I have like my containers of embellishments. So this is the Peaceful Poppy sequins, the um, faceted heart gems, and the perennial essence floral centers. So the little like yellow flower centers. And then the top one here is a lot of it, uh, a lot of it is like little like gift baggy things. And pizza boxes and googly eyes. I'm not really sure why there's a million googly eyes. A whole bunch of these little clips because I got them on um, on a Stampin' Up! gift. And apparently I have watercolor paper in there because, oh, I used to have watercolor paper and something else in one of these. And I guess, it, I mean, it technically goes over there now. But And then this, so this is a stamp set that I went ahead and sold the stamp set, um, but stole the stamp out of it and didn't sell it with this stamp because this was like my favorite greeting of all time and it says you're a friend who makes good times great and unfortunately the Stampin' Up! usually it says Stampin' Up! in the year and of course this one doesn't because it's like the one that I keep um, but it's a long time ago and ever since I pulled it out of that stamp set I've never used it but now it's almost like I've kept it for so long I just have to keep it like forever as like that crazy little story that just kind of makes you laugh. So 
but I do love that greeting. I've always thought it was fabulous. I also have a Magnolia Lane Memories and More pack, so that's kind of random, but I'm not really sure it fits in one of the other categories. So that is everything in there. And so that's the basics. That's paper, ink, stamps, embellishments, and then everything here. Oh, of course, I do have all of my punches all the way over there. So my punches are over there, and um, and then my, um, my die cutting and everything is actually across the room over there. So that I actually do have to get up and, and go do is any of the die cutting, which is probably why I love punches even more because they're so handy right here. Um, and sometimes I bring my, um, my big shot over to this table to work on uh, rather than standing over there, but it just kind of depends. So I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of my stamping therapy, which is, um, is cleaning and organizing and everything else. Pulled pork sandwiches and corn on the cob. Boy, that is like a summer barbecue, and it is not summertime out there. Whoo, it is cold. That sun makes it look like it's gorgeous out, but whenever I looked and I saw that the temperature said like 37, I was like, brr, I'm not going out today. Um, and I'll just stay inside and pretend like it's 80. Pretend. So anyway, that is today's Daily Dose of Stamping Therapy. Um, stay tuned. I will be doing um, more, like I can show you guys anything in my stamp room, any organizational tips. Um, we will be stamping again tomorrow. Um, and then I also can do any sort of Q&A or product um, tutorial or anything like that. So if there's something you'd like to see, then let me know in the comments or send me a message. And, um, and I'll see what I can do because... We're still stuck inside, but we're still going to have fun together. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Don't forget, you can always check out my blog, laurasstamppad.com. Um, and you can also check out my YouTube channel, Laura's Stamp Pad. So you can always see more there, get inspiration, ideas, tips, and tricks, any of that. Because um, I'm still posting on, um, on those outlets as well as here on Facebook. So have a wonderful day, everyone. Love, hugs, and prayers, and happy Easter.